This is the section on hypersensitivity reactions. What is hypersensitivity? Well, it's a normal but exaggerated or uncontrolled immune response to an antigen that can produce inflammation, destroy cells, or cause tissue injury. This can happen right away or be called an immediate reaction, or it can be delayed, which will happen a little bit later. Usually it's some type of an immunization or a sensitization, sensitization response. So in general, what is an allergy? Well, sometimes it's called an atopy, which refers to the immediate hypersensitivity mediated by IgE. Allergy and atopy both mean the same thing. Although um, this day and age, we typically call them allergies. They can also be called atopy. As we learned in the second module, IgE is what's involved with these types of reactions. It can be specific for hundreds of different types of allergens. Just to name a few, hay fever, as you can see the guy in the bottom right hand corner is sneezing, having asthma, food allergies, or a latex allergy. Those are some common ones that you may be familiar with. So what are some of these types of antigens that bring on these responses? Well, we can have en environmental substances such as dust, dermatitis, drugs, and metals. Do any of you um, have a problem wearing cheap jewelry? I know that I do. If I put on a necklace that may have nickel in it, um, a cheap one from a like costume jewelry, for example, will cause my neck to break out in a rash. There's infectious agents that can cause um, issues too. For example, the influenza virus or strep bacteria that can cause immune complexing diseases or just damage to the respiratory tract. We can have self antigens, which can cause a very small response. And usually that contact hypersensitivity is caused by haptins. For example, that the nickel that I talked about in those necklaces would be an example of that. All right, we're going to run through four different types of hypersensitivity reactions. You're going to have to know the difference between each one. You're going to have to know the name, whether complement is involved, what types of cells are involved, and some examples. All right, first type, type 1 hypersensitivity reaction is anaphylactic. Our most common one is a drug-induced type of um, situation or an insect sting, such as a bee sting. The response is fairly immediate and it involves IgE. Complement is not involved. There's not a lot of cell destruction that's going to happen with this. But the thing that's going to make it tough are the release of histamine and heparin from those um, mast cells and basophils. Cytokines are involved. Some examples of this would be anaphylaxis such as getting um, a bee sting, having hay fever, which is your seasonal allergies, some type of hives. You know, if you've ever taken a medication, I know I'm allergic to sulfa and I get hives from it, also called urticaria. Having asthma in certain foods can cause these types of reactions. For example, the little kids that may have a peanut allergy or our old babysitter had an apple allergy. And if she would drink something with apple in it, remember one day she drank some fruit punch, didn't realize there was apples in it, and her throat started to close up and get all itchy. So those are examples of type 1 hypersensitivity reactions. Usually not as life-threatening, although, you know, bee sting can be life-threatening. Um, they, they tend to be more of those mild, itchy, sneezy type of things. All right, getting a little more serious here with the type 2 hypersensitivity reactions. This type 2 is called antibody-dependent, complement-mediated cytotoxic reactions. I know that's a mouthful. It involves IgG, things such as transfusion reactions. You know, if somebody gets the wrong um, blood type or sometimes you're just allergic to the proteins in there. Hemolytic disease of the newborn and autoimmune hemolytic anemia fall in this category. It is a cell-mediated toxicity. What happens is that autoantibodies attack and damage components of solid tissue, such as the antiglomerular basement membrane that can cause kidney damage. There could also be, also be lung involvement, and it can clog up some of the lungs. Macrophages and polymorphonuclear cells are involved, and so is complement. Usually defined if one of these types of autoimmune-ish issues are going on, we would do a direct antiglobulin test. This would check to see if there are antibodies coating your cells. Type 3 involves our immune complex reactions. The mechanism of tissue injury here is the deposition of immune complexes, a soluble antigen with an antibody, in blood vessel walls and tissues. Usually it's IgG and IgM that form these complexes. We call it the immune complexing disease. 
we see anaphylaxis. Notice, that, notice there's a couple X's in there. That causes, it's from multiple organ involvement. So normally there's several, um, several issues going on. We got liver problems, we end up with kidney problems, lung problems. This immune complexing disease is where the immune complexes are not cleared and they become deposited in the tissues. One example is farmer's lung. Or having an extensive zone of erythema and edema around um, a necrotic center or an arthritis reaction in the skin. Some of the autoimmune diseases that fall into this category are lupus. We're going to have a whole chapter on that coming up, which is an autoimmune disorder characterized by autoantibodies that form immune complexes with autoantigens, which are deposited in the glomeruli, and as you can imagine, being part of the kidneys would cause kidney failure or kidney dysfunction. Hashimoto's is an autoimmune thyroid disorder that is organ-specific. That would be what I have because I have um, antibodies towards my thyroid, so my thyroid doesn't work real well. Um, testing for type 3 hyposensitivity reactions, um, we do immunoassay for those antigens. For example, rheumatoid arthritis or anti-nuclear antibodies for um, lupus. The treatment is usually some type of steroid. All right, type 4 is a cell-mediated hypersensitivity reaction. This is T helper cell dependent. We call it a delayed type hypersensitivity because it happens after being exposed to it for a little while. It involves antigen-sensitized T cells. For example, a latex allergy would cause contact dermatitis. Complement is not involved here. Testing for delayed sensitivity, something could be like a TB skin test. If you've had that done, that's checking to see if you've been exposed to tuberculosis. The only treatment here is to avoid the exposure. If you know you're allergic to latex, you don't wear latex gloves. So what about allergy shots? How do those help somebody with seasonal allergies? Well, it does something called desensitization. Giving doses of the allergen, for example, some pollen or whatever, hay, whatever type of hay fever you're allergic to, and increasing increments to stop the allergy war within the immune system. This improves symptoms of the allergies. Or you can take antihistamines or um, use an air purifier in your house. And something really interesting I want to share here, um, which I learned from a friend, and I tried it, and we'll see if it works. If you buy local natural honey, I'm not talking about the honey and the bear that you get at the grocery store, which who knows where in the world it came from, but from like your local farmer's market or something like that, if you buy local honey, there is enough pollen and allergens in that honey that if you eat a teaspoon of it every day from January through um up to when the hay fever starts, which is what, May, June, um, you will have much less allergy problems. So I'm going to try it, um, see what happens. I'm, If anything, if it decreases them a little, fantastic. But it makes sense because you're desensitizing your body. You're giving yourself small doses of the allergen in um, a natural form, such as local honey, rather than um, giving yourself shots, etc. So I don't know. I thought it'd be worth a fun try. That concludes our section on hypersensitivity. Thank you.